today. A sleeper. This car is actually more rare than a Boss 429. Faster too. Uh, and sure as heck doesn't look like it. This is a 1970 sports roof fastback. Um, Q code. So that means it's got a 428 under the hood. Non-ram air. So it's missing the shaker. Just 70. One of these vehicles were made. And this car is paired with a four-speed trans. And just 42 of those came from the factory. It's a pretty clean car. It's got, it is a project. It looks great. Driver condition now, it's a super sleeper. It's got some paint chipping, fading. You know, it's it shows some age, but it's definitely a a nice car to start with for a concourse restoration because a car this rare uh, really deserves to be concourse restored but for the time being I mean some of you might argue with me that they should just drive it and enjoy it the way it is and that's not a bad point either um, it's a very nice car I'll show you in the underneath shots everything is super solid there's very little signs of any sort of rust um, everything is super minimal. If there's a couple areas I'll point out. Um, really nice car. Actually, one of the uh, rust areas here we can talk about now. It's just here. I don't know how much you can see that. But on the back side, super solid. Floors are very solid. Trunk solid, everything. Um, some dents here and there. Some shipping paint on the areas where the sun just beat on it. For example, the, the roof. It needs some love, it needs some loose ends tied up, but it is a really nice car. So I love the look of it. It doesn't scream race car. Um, it's got hubcaps factory optioned actually with the uh, optional trim ring and um, not on the car but I have a set that will come with the car again some fading and some uh, chipping actually my favorite part of the patina if you want to call it that um, is the the way that this iconic 70 uh, 69 and 70 hood body line or hood line kind of faded and somebody was polishing it wore these edges down a little bit and then the paint faded from the sun and turned out pretty cool I don't know if you can, this dent is showing up um, this car has a 391 rear end so uh, the Super Cobra Jet option. Uh, Super Cobra Jet cars are 391 and 430 gears. Uh, this car has the auxiliary uh, oil cooler and a lot of the other Super Cobra Jet parts. A lot of that stuff I can show you when uh, I do the walk around video of it underneath. Um, there's some Super Cobra Jet specific stuff that I point out. This car has a lot of those hard to find parts. This car is super original. I didn't know if I, I'll show you the odometer. I believe this is the original number, just under 42,000 miles. Um, in the underneath shots, you can see the car has the original U joints in it. There's um, original motor mounts. Uh, tons of stuff that just points to this car being truly original uh, miles. So here's that oil cooler I was talking about. These are the factory brackets, upper and lower. Um, oil cooler runs down to there. Um, this car obviously was repainted. A lot of this stuff 
you know shouldn't be glossy like this but um it's a super nice car aftermarket wiring um you know ignition coil fuel pressure stuff this is an incorrect intake however a very desirable intake this is actually a you can see it here uh Intake manifold off of a 67 GT500. Uh, this car actually, you can see it here, has auto light belts on it. Pretty, pretty wild. The correct Cobra, Super Cobra Jet, heavy duty fan, uh, fan spacer. Again, when I do the underneath, I'll show you the, the hatchet for the external balancer. Um, the, it's a part of the camshaft crankshaft rather that has the uh, hatchet on it the externally balanced part that's a super cobra jet that's super cobra jet only it's one of the things that helps differentiate super cobra jets from cobra jets um, all these parts are like i said super cobra jet particular i mean even this is original factory part it's got stamped on it down there november 19 i mean this car was built december 1st 1969 so all of the parts, all of the date codes, everything that I found in this car all aligns nicely with, with that build date. So super nice car. Has some loose ends. You could do those up, drive it the way it is, or like I said, fully concourse restoration. Um, but a lot of really hard to find parts on this car and a lot of, a lot of really, uh, it's a great car to start with. Um, got original trunk mat. Uh, it's, everything's super clean back here as far as any worries of rust or rot. There aren't any. Um, underneath looks really good. Some paint flaking or the uh, trunk, whatever, spray in is peeling back a little bit there. Um, again, super clean, nice original spare, uh, quick jack. I'd say that this probably has never been driven on. Tons of tread, all the little lines are still intact, the marks on the back side. See the paint markings. All right, we're gonna do a walk around of the underneath of the 1970s Super Cobra Jet Q code. Um, I'm gonna work my way back to front. Um, some cool stuff kind of noticing back here. This is the shipping tie down brackets. Um, those still being on the car is kind of unusual and somebody thought that you know not well they normally take them off at the dealership so the fact that they're still on there is kind of cool and over the years of ownership this car nobody took those off um some other originality here we've got the original tailpipe bracket hanger um moving through here rear axle staggered shocks uh it's for four speeds it's to help with the axle hop um somewhat staggered shock uh, brackets here um, the plates are intact still original with the car so that one says 428R this one should say 428L I don't know how well that comes out on the camera there you go um, like I mentioned before this is a super Cobra jet and this car has a 391 gear so this tag here shows you that kind of crazy that this tag is even really still on the car just again speaks to the originality of the car um, let me see how I can, well I can light this up without blowing it out but on there you can see the axle tag says 391 it also has the assembly or uh, build date on there on the tag so pretty cool that that's still on here um, got casting number or date code there um, all the date codes on this car are numbers matching. That shows you late 1969 casting on it. Um, 
and kind of the last piece of this uh, this is a nodular um, rear axle so they would weld a N on the top of the case here so you can see that there um, pretty cool uh, we do believe this car is the 42 thousand original miles um, and a lot of the stuff that kind of shows us that are the original hangers and, and stuff like that but also the here you can see uh, original u-joint on the rear um, you can tell it's original because it's kind of got a pocket cut out there uh, in the in the center of it um, and replacements would have that would be smooth there'd be a zerk fitting so pretty cool um, whole car is really clean. Here's some areas of typical problem areas, you know, on any car behind the rear tires. You can see how solid the car is. Uh, there's a little bit of something going on there, but for the most part, the car is super clean. That's probably the worst spot on the underneath of the car, actually. Working our way through it. Floors are really solid, not a bit of rust on them. Frame rails look good, or the pinch weld. Again, uh, this is a, the U joint here is the same as it is in the back. You know, it's the, got that little divot in it. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out how to show it to you better, but um, original U joint. It's kind of moving through here. Um, Hurst Competition Plus, so that is a nineteen seventy upgrade from the sixty nine Cobra Jet Super Cobra Jet cars. Um, nineteen seventy got that Hurst Competition uh, shifter. That's just a an upgrade. The cars are better shifting. Again, pretty rust free. Very rust free, I should say. I mean, solid torque boxes look great. Uh, over here, showing you the tail shaft, 70 part number on it. Uh, this is a Super Cobra Jet part, Super Cobra Jet only part. This is a gear reducer because of the high gear ratio in the back on these cars, 391 or 430s, uh, Super Cobra Jets. So that's a gear reducer for the speedometer. So that will read correctly. Um, rare item to be on there. So great, hard to find part. Still intact on the car. Uh, up in here, show you the the tag there. Um, R U G. It's seventy transmission. Um, more date codes correct for the car that fall in line. Another date code up here I'll try to get for you. All of this is photographed. I can show you uh, in, the, in the photo gallery better than I can kind of do it here on the video. So if you want to spend some time looking at those, that's a great place to understand better about the car. Um, some other stuff that was brought to my attention, kind of original. Originality, it's these uh, covers on the back of the brakes. If the brakes were serviced over time, and those people would just throw those away, uh, not necessarily come back on the car. So, again, kind of shows you the originality of the car. It's on both sides here. Um, and this will be really hard to show you, but up there, on the head is actually a stamping of the car's VIN. So this is the matching motor to the car. The VIN code uh, is on the head. Pretty cool. Original, original motor. Here you got the uh, a stamping or a casting number. Falls in line with the numbers matching of the car. Some other stuff here. Um, this hatchet, they call it, uh, it's a Super Cobra Jet only crankshaft, so that 
hatch that you see there on the crankshaft popping out is um, to externally balance the motor. So that's a unique part. And uh, still in the car, obviously. Show you the oil cooler lines. Um, like I mentioned when we were doing the outside walk around, uh, the auxiliary oil cooler out in the front uh, hanging there on the core support. So these are all the lines that run in here. All that stuff still intact. Here's that oil cooler I was talking about. Original factory brackets. Show you some part numbers on that. Again, all the part numbers might be hard to read on here in the video, but they're all in the, the gallery. Okay, I wanted to talk about some of the documentation that comes with the car. Uh, we'll start with this Marty report. Um, so you can see it's a 70 model year, sports roof, 428 Cobra Jet non-RAM Air. That's where the Q code comes in. So you can see in the VIN here, the Q. Um, it was assembled in December of 1969. Black, black vinyl seats, 391 gear, four-speed manual transmission. Delivered to whatever this dealer code is. Um, and then, so this again just shows you the equipment available or equipment optioned on this car. This is Super Cobra Jet engine slash drag pack. Sports deck rear seat. Power front disc brakes. Trim rings and hubcaps. Quick ratio steering and attack. This vehicle was produced December 1st, 1969. Seven days behind schedule. So earlier in the video, I was talking about the rarity of the car. So this is some of the breakout of that. It gets into how many 70 Mustangs were made, then how many of those were sports roofs, and then this is the number that I was talking about. The 71 came with 428 Cobra Jet non-RAM air. So again, that's the Q code. There's only 71 Q codes in 1970, and only 42 had a four-speed manual transmission. After that, it gets a little bit more granular. Um, you know, this stuff kind of splitting hairs a little bit. You know, you could this car technically is a one of one um but we're talking about really we're talking about a one of 42 because after that then you just talk about just how many seven were just painted black five of them of those black ones had the standard bucket seats and only one of those had a 391 drag pack rear axle so super special car very rare and uh like i said desirable sleeper wolf in sheep's clothing kind of car Another cool part of the story of this car, we uh, recovered the build sheet. Um, this is uh, actually like underneath the carpet between the, it's whatever, they're, they're usually not with the cars. Um, speaks to the originality of the vehicle, that this is still here. Um, you know, cars get torn apart, redone, whatever. This might have gotten thrown away at some point or just disintegrated because it was poorly kept. So anyhow, this intact is super cool. You can see the the VIN number here, the RUG AZ um, transmission, which we point out in the walk around of the underneath of the vehicle. That's the, the transmission tag number. Um, yeah, and then this piece also was saved. It's the engine tag. So that's the original engine tag. Pretty cool to uh, still have that intact as well. So you've got the rear engine, sorry, the rear axle tag, the transmission tag, and the engine tag, all with the car. 